So at Place IQ, we uh, use location as a means for understanding consumer behavior. Location isn't just a mechanism for geo-targeting, it's actually a language that we can use to describe and define what the consumer journey looks like. So we can look at the movements of over 100 million individuals and we can see kind of where they live, where they shop, where they work, where they eat. And we've built a language for defining these many petabytes of data and basically into audiences. So now I can write rules saying I'm looking for someone who is middle income Hispanic and hits grocery stores three different types a week and the grocery stores they hit are three different brands. So we can see that they're not a loyalist to one shopper, they're out there kind of piecing together the rest of their grocery list. We define that, we can select all the devices, and then we can do a couple things with that. We can either message those devices, tell them about you know, different ways, different offers fit in their life, or we can understand them. We can look at those devices and see where they go. So we can see what you know, grocery stores are most loyal, what do they do for fun, how often do they travel. Uh, are they working? Are they holding down two jobs? How are they kind of getting along? We can use all of that with these kind of oodles of location data that we contextualize within our platform to understand who people are. Um, and another thing that we can do is we can also use that for measurement. So after we serve them the ad, we can play that forward and say, hey, in the week after we serve them the ad, did we actually make a dent in the likelihood that they actually visited foot traffic? So foot traffic to a key retailer, could be many retailers, could divide it up by line items. And we can understand that on a very granular level. It's called place visit rate. Um, and uh, we can do that for mobile media. But because we've connected these devices to their households, we can do that for anything tied to the household. So linear TV, addressable TV, uh, direct mail, uh, very, very cool stuff of using the mobile device and location to link all the different elements of audiences' lives, but also the different media exposures that we make along the way. Place IQ has been in business for how long? Uh, a little over five years. A little over five years. Going back five years ago, what we had in the early days of doing this somewhat new category five years ago for the most part and pioneering that, and now we're looking down where 2015 is taking us. We're, everyone talks about the quantum leap of mobile. Yep. And everyone talks about digital natives using mobile more than ever um, and the amount of times everyone picks up their phone and like. Yep. What is that doing to your ability to better target the customer in your specific business? Uh, well, so one quick point I want to make is that uh, the, our audiences are way ahead of us. We're, we're the ones that are taking a long time to catch up. So I, I almost want to flip that question and say, you know, what are we going to do to fit this new device that fits in uniquely within our customers' lives, what are we going to do to leverage that better? So the way I like to think about it is anytime we're given a new technology, the first thing we do is we use it, this new technology, fire handed down, you know, by the gods, and we use it to do something we were already doing. Right. So, so this is, uh, if you look at location and mobile, what's the first thing we do when we give location and mobile? Let's, let's throw up a geofence. To me, that's the equivalent of hiring some college students to stand on your step and spin a sign. It's just a little thing raising your head and saying, I'm here. Or it's a uh, car dealership getting a bigger inflatable Godzilla. You know, these are the things that just say, I am here. That's how we used it. Even though it was this incredibly powerful technology, that was location 1.0. Right. It was targeting a place. Location 2.0 is understanding people. So you understand a place then you understand people. When you understand people, now you're starting to define these different milestones or moments in their lives, either on their daily kind of routine or on a longer time span where you're looking for changes. That's what I would call location 2.0, where you're not looking at just, I'm at a place, I'm at a place, I'm near a place. It is, here is all the places I've been to. Now, put that in the context of my life. I would say that's about where the market is right now, and that's what we at Place IQ, we've been in a location 2.0 since about 2012. Uh, so, so less than five years ago, but still within our thing. What we're starting to work on now, and I haven't seen in the market yet, aside from some of the work, work we're working on, is location 3.0. Understand places, understand people, understand entire communities. So understanding the interactions between people and how they affect people. No one lives in a vacuum. And when you can start to have that granularity and nuance, 
some of the questions, I was talking with one of the clients here earlier and we we're debating if the person who lives next door to you goes to a Target, does that make you more likely to go to a Target? If you drive home on your work every day and you pass the same six stores, what's your incentive to vary off that and how do the other people in your life affect that? So mapping that community I think is the next step.